After posting our Bishop Eddie Long and Bishop T.D. Jakes videos, our besties requested we look into someone else who deserves a top spot in our mega church messiness series. And that person is none other than John Gray. Lord, this is gonna be messy. Lord, this is gonna be messy. Before the holier than thou crew tells us we need to mind our business, turn to your neighbor and say, Scoop me up uh, something to munch on <laughs> from rrgsnacks.com. <laughs> Our online concession stand that has an assortment of beef and bacon jerky, butter toffee peanuts, green apple licorice, and RRG coffee mugs. John Gray was born on June 26, 1973. A damn cancer. I knew it, girl. I knew it. In a chit chat with Sister Circle YouTube channel, he said he was raised by a single mother. Around the age of six, he was taken advantage of by an unknown person and has admitted that he never healed from the trauma. The truth is, as big as I am, I'm a marathon runner. I might not run in the natural, but I've been running in the spirit my whole life. I've been running from the things that I'm afraid of. I've been running from the things that have been stalking me in my fears and in my nightmares, areas of insecurity, areas where I don't feel adequate. He also stated that the men in his family suffered from lifelong addictions, and he struggled to fight the demons that he inherited. He was a mama's boy, and his bond with his mom affected some of his romantic relationships as he got older. Hell, one of them single mothers married to their sons, huh? He was engaged at one point, but things didn't quite work out. And then, while in charge of the youth arts department at church, he crossed paths with one of the leaders of the dance ministry. He observed the woman from afar and noticed that she was a little bit weird. Ninja, you the weirdo that was stalking her. <laughs> with his stalking ass. He continued watching her, but he never approached her. With his scary self. About a year after he first noticed her, he finally approached her after a church service. She introduced herself as Aventer. Avatar? Girl, no. Aventer. Oh, I thought she said Avatar, girl. Girl, no. <laughs> I was like, this is gonna be strange. Shh, <laughs> listen to the rest of the story, girl. They started talking, and he asked to borrow her phone, and then he texted himself from her phone so he could have her number. Number. They started off as friends before deciding to be in a relationship. They got married in 2010. On their honeymoon, they were so broke they had to share a shrimp cocktail. Fix it, Jesus. She didn't check his bank uh -uh, account, honey. No. Mm -mm, Holy no. is what them pockets was, what? Honey? Couldn't keep mm -mm. no money. John said, I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. <laughs> They welcomed two children, and unbeknownst to Aventer, she married a man who was dealing with several personal issues. Lord, here we go. Here we go. John admitted to Sister Circle TV that aside from the demons he inherited, there were demons he invited into his life. He was constantly fighting against his own nature. He said, So now I'm trying to be a husband and a father and a leader, and I didn't see any of those up close. So how can you be what you've never seen? Ooh, message! So now, the wife that I chose is better than the man that I am. I married a woman two sizes too big. I have to grow into Aventer. She's a coat. I still can't fit her. She's bigger than me. And she's had to cover me while I grow up. I gotta grow and, into her. But she's a covering. She's a covering, I, not a lid. Ooh, that's because if a man marries a lid, she'll stop your dream. But if you marry a covering, she'll push you to your destiny. Now, I'm about to shout and tear this whole thing up. Honey, mm-mm. While the Sister Circle co-hosts hooped and hollered over John's testimony, a lot of people could see right through every word that was coming out of his mouth. Viewers pointed out that the pastor was using words that described Aventer as being a better person than he will ever be in order to condition his wife to accept his personal struggles. Because a strong, black, God-fearing woman can can surely handle a man who is dealing with deep-rooted, unaddressed issues that are reportedly wreaking havoc on their marriage, right? What I tell y'all, a black woman's curse. <laughs> we just expected to handle it all. Girl, be quiet. You be quiet. I was here before your ass. By 2016, he was an associate pastor at Joel Osteen's Lakewood Church in Houston. That same year, Oprah Winfrey's network announced that John had been given an eight-episode docuseries called The Book of John. The show featured glimpses of his home life, as well as footage of John helping people in his community overcome challenges, all while facing his own struggles as a husband and father. 
did he go to therapy, girl? That's what I want to know. While keeping his position as associate pastor at Lakewood Church, in May 2018, he became the pastor of Relentless Church in Greenville, South Carolina. While it should have been a time of celebration, there was trouble brewing. In July 2018, John and other black pastors were invited to the White House to meet the then-president, Donald Trump. John told The Real that the purpose of the meeting was to find ways to reacclimate prison inmates back into society. Now what the hell they got to do with him? That's not his ministry, honey, at all. God said, go, because that affects me. I got cousins in jail. I've had uncles in jail. My father was in jail the day I was born. So those were things that speak to me. He knew he could lose his credibility and damage his reputation, and his wife even told him it was a bad idea. But nonetheless, he got on the first thing smoking straight to D.C. While meeting with Trump, John invoked a Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. sentiment. Dr. King said, we cannot influence a table that we are not seated at. And so we pray that this conversation will be fruitful and productive and honoring of the best traditions of this nation. I have a dream that one day y'all will leave Dr. King out of this mess. <laughs> okay. With his social media comments in shambles, he took to his Instagram to share that he hadn't visited the president to show support. He added, I went as a man of God and I wanted to be heard. That if there's anybody who thinks they're above praying for people they don't agree with, then you don't have the heart of Christ. Or the brain of a squirrel. <laughs> okay. Because you should have stayed your black ass in Greenville, South Carolina, honey. He also made it clear that he didn't attend the meeting as a politician. He said, I'm not a Democrat, nor a Republican, nor nor an independent. I'm a Christian. Ninja, do you vote red or blue? That's what we want to know. Red or blue? Very easy. Answer the damn question. Months after his visit, it made sense why people were so disappointed in him. He told Sister Circle TV that he finally realized he was being used as a visual for Trump's base. Now you're saying hindsight would I go again. I'll simply say this. I've been invited back a number of times and it's not the proper occasion. During a June 2018 sermon, he revealed that he and his wife had been having problems for the past two years and they contemplated filing for divorce. He said they were arguing a lot, and one of them would sleep on the couch some nights. He added, And I started listening to the wrong voices and let some people get too close. And she found out, and she set it off, just like a good wife should. There we go with the manipulation again. Ninja, how about you just don't F up? How about that? His wife addressed the situation during the same church service by saying, And then I prayed for them and him, and then the devil loses. Because what's not going to happen is you tell me that I'm going to lose my purpose because somebody whispered to a 16-year-old, John, the devil is a lie. I'm standing with my husband, and you can go on back to the pits of hell where you came from. A writer for Yahoo was unimpressed with John and Aventer's statements. The writer called out how the black church had consistently been of a disservice to black women as it pertained to heterosexual marriages. The writer stated, Black women in the church are conditioned to accept manipulation and infidelity as simply the devil and not an actual shortcoming and moral failing of their partner. Amen. While the Greys continued working to heal their marriage, they had more drama to deal with in October 2018. An anonymous tipster contacted the Greenville News website and claimed John had moved into a $1.8 million home in a gated community just 10 minutes from the church. The website conducted an investigation and confirmed through property records and real estate transactions that the church owned the home. Because the church owns the home, it's also eligible to be exempt from property taxes. Once the news was made public, the chief financial officer for Relentless Church told the website that the board agreed to buy the home because it was needed to entice someone of John's caliber to relocate to Greenville. The home is the church's asset and will stay with the church if John were to ever leave. Some people were outraged that the church would buy such a lavish home, while others thought it was no big deal. One member of the congregation said, I'm not concerned about how much someone else's house costs. I hope no one is concerned about how much mine cost. I think they have a right to live among their peers, people in their own income bracket. In December 2018, John did something that not many pastors do. Instead of asking for offerings from the congregation, he told members to take what they needed from the collection basket. Wait a minute now. Rewind it. <laughs> In December 2018, John did something that not many pastors do. Instead of asking for offerings from the congregation, he told members to take what they needed from the collection basket. Girl, you heard what I said? I was just checking. 
I thought that's what you said, but I was just checking, girl. Go ahead. The good deed was overshadowed just days later when John surprised his wife with a $200,000 Lamborghini SUV. The car was a gift in honor of their eighth wedding anniversary. Nah, that was I'm sorry for cheating on your ass gift. <laughs> that's what that was. He presented the car keys to her with cameras rolling, and if he expected people to applaud him for purchasing a car that's worth more than what most Americans make every year, he was dead wrong. You're dead wrong, Pastor. <laughs> you dead wrong. Social media users took to the comments section to accuse John of using the church's money to purchase the luxury vehicle. Not a nickel, not a penny from this church, Relentless Church went towards the gift that I gave my wife. Okay, but what about a dime? A quarter? <laughs> 50 cent. <laughs> he said the SUV was his wife's dream car, and God helped him purchase the car with his book profits and other ventures. God said, now why am I in it? His wife defended her new gift by saying, I don't see anyone screaming about how basketball players drive what they do while you paying money to see them play in arenas and on fields. We don't live for people. We live for God. She later deleted her comment. Girl, sit your ass down. As 2018 came to an end, John popped up at Lakewood Church and told the congregation that 2018 got on his nerves and he was ready for the year to be over. You get on my nerves too, Pastor. Okay. He also discussed the backlash he received about the SUV and he said it taught him a valuable lesson. Stop broadcasting everything. Unfortunately for the pastor, 2019 would bring more struggles. No, not again. After telling his congregation he had thoughts about taking his own life, the pastor visited Bishop T.D. Jake's revival event on January 3, 2019. During the event, the bishop called the dark spirits out of John's body. John later revealed that Tyrese also saved his life when he was thinking about ending it all. According to John, Tyrese showed up at his house, put him in a vehicle, and took him to a counselor. Tyrese arranged for the pastor to have an IV drip, a chef's table full of food, and holistic professionals on standby, ready to remove all the pain from his body and his soul. The pastor went on to thank Tyrese for being a real friend and a brother. The pastor was caught up in another scandal in February 2019 when he told his congregation that God told him to ask them for $250,000 to fix the roof of the church. No, he needed $200,000 to pay for that damn SUV he couldn't afford to begin with. You better sell that Lambo. He said he needed the money by April, and he was pitching in $300 of his own money for the repairs. $300? The church ain't got insurance. They can afford a $1.8 million house for him to live in, but they ain't got insurance to pay for the roof. In December 2019, the church that owned the land that Relentless Church was located on hit them with an eviction notice. The owner alleged that John had been shady and dishonest in executing a transfer agreement when he took over the location in 2018. The churches eventually reached an agreement on the issue, but the terms were not publicly disclosed. And then, in January 2020, OWN Network canceled John's show after three seasons. Bye, Ashy. Then came July 2020, when a photo was shared online of John in the hospital. It was later confirmed that he was suffering from severe pulmonary embolism. After spending almost the entire month of July in the hospital, he was released. The very next month, all hell broke loose. In August 2020, rumors emerged that he was cheating on his wife again. Tasha Kay had a chat with a Houston woman who claimed John was friends with her brother, who's a pastor in the New Jersey area. When her brother's wife passed, passed away, John attended the service, and the woman left him a comment on Instagram to thank him for his kind words. That's when she and the pastor connected via DM. After she told him which hair salon she worked at, he allegedly called her job. The woman told him she couldn't talk, and she gave him her cell phone number so he could call her later. From there, they reportedly exchanged racy photos, and she alleged that the pastor gave her money and showed off his tidy whities during a FaceTime session. Don't nobody want to see that? And you can't afford to be giving nobody money. Talking about you only got $300 on a roof repair and you around here giving side pieces of money. Sit your ass down. The pastor reportedly told her he and his wife were getting divorced, and he tried to get the woman to visit his Houston residence when his wife was away for the day so they could smash. 
quit his trifling ass. The woman turned him down, and the pastor was reportedly in his feelings so much that he stopped contacting her. Tasha Kay later shared audio on Instagram of John complaining to the woman that his wife never cooked for them. She too busy being the man of the house to be cooking. Get your ass in there and cook. <laughs> You might have been able to afford a chef had you not spent 200,000 damn dollars on a car. You was just in the hospital for pulmonary embolism. I'm saying you could stand to lose a few pounds. Eat a salad, eat an apple or something, eat some fruit. Get somewhere and sit down, drink some water. Hell, need no fuck food. Blood pressure high as hell. Weeks later, during a virtual sermon, the pastor didn't deny or confirm the allegations. However, he shared his plans for therapy and apologized to the congregation. A representative from the church claimed that the woman was extorting the pastor and the FBI was investigating the situation. Child, stop lying. She didn't ask for no damn money. She didn't want to sleep with him. She need to sue his ass for that damn tidy whitey picture. That's what she need to do. <laughs> then came June 2022, and Tasha Kay revealed she had footage that the pastor allegedly sent to a masseuse. Tasha alleged the pastor was playing with his dangalang in the video. Mm -mm. Tasha went into explicit detail about what the meat was looking like. We're not going to get into it on our family-friendly channel. Family-friendly, my ass. But we'll give you a little hint about what he's working with below the belt. Eeny, weeny, teeny, weeny, shrivel, little, short, short, man, don't want, don't want, don't want, don't want, don't want, don't want. <laughs> John allegedly invited the woman to visit him in Atlanta. The woman claimed he sent her cash apps and even promised to buy her a house and a car. Tasha claimed she had a conversation with Aventer and even sent her the video. Then John's lawyers reportedly called Tasha and threatened to sue her for showing Aventer the footage. According to YouTuber Larry Reed, the pastor and the woman never met and they never had any physical contact. Larry added that the pastor is not wicked, he's wounded. He been wounded for a long time now. Most wounds heal. Put his ass at the altar with P. Diddy. Put, put both of them down there. Stay down there till we tell you to get up. Beginning on Easter Sunday 2024, Relentless Church will be called Love Story Church. It will also be interesting to see if John will continue to embarrass the hell out of his wife in 2024 or if Aventer will finally say enough is enough. We'll be keeping an eye on them and we'll report back to our besties with any new developments. Now, besties, if you enjoyed this video, let us know down below. And thank you. I want to say thank you. Thank you for watching. Oh, oh, gee.